Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Unknown God. Beloved family, our text says, Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way. You are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. Acts 17, 22-23 Paul was addressing the Areopagus, which was the leadership council. The people were very religious, worshipping idols as their god. That sound a lot like today. Did you know that in the Hindu religion, there are over 33 million gods? Yes, you heard right, 33 million. It's the largest religion in India and the third largest religion in the world after Christianity and Islam. But some in the Western world that fall under other religions may say that's absurd. Yes, I agree. But before we judge the Hindu religion, let's consider that a difference in the Hindu religion may be that they name all their idols gods and other religions don't. Oftentimes, we can't distinguish what is an idol. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, says Elohim. Some of us put things before God all the time. I'm talking directly to me. I'm guilty of putting other things before my God. I just didn't call them gods like the Hindus do. But our Father God said, if it is before him, it is an idol worship. I am not ashamed to say it anymore, but at one point in my life, golf became an idol. I was obsessed with it. Every new swing aid, putting aid, golf aid, golf clubs, golf balls, an accessory I needed to have. After a round of golf, I might stay behind and slam balls to the nightfall. All I could think about was golf, little room for God. I say little because when I was writing my book, Any Way You Slice It, thoughts of King Jesus Christ and his kingdom dominated my day and my night. As Joshua said, I meditated on the word. This book of the Lord did not depart from my mouth. I kept meditating on it day and night to observe what was written in it. But when the book was done, my priorities changed. I am confessing my heart to you this morning, family. I started trying to fulfill my own dreams. I guess I started seeking the world first and the kingdom of God second. The house, the lifestyle, the comforts of life. And as I said, I had little room for God. See, the adversary is okay with you and I having little room for God. That's like going to church on Sunday morning, singing praise and worship for 50 minutes, listening to the announcements and giving tithes for five minutes, and listening to the preaching for 40 minutes, an hour for some churches to three hours for others. But from Monday to Saturday, we spend hours doing our own thing. For me, a round of golf lasts four hours at least. That would be two to four Sundays of religious practice. And the golf equipment costs money, to play costs money, even to practice costs money. Where am I going with this? I'm so glad you asked because King Jesus has the answer. He says, don't keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. Stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Matthew 6, 19-21 Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I was spending money on where my heart was. I was spending time on where my heart was. That which you give the most money or the most time may be where your heart is. That may be your idol. So you see, the Hindus named their idols, gods and goddesses, 33 million times. We don't. Ours is more subtle, more evasive and hidden. Okay, maybe the word idols is throwing you off. I'll say it a different way. How about idolize? 
which means to admire, revere, or love greatly or excessively. Is that more relatable? The psalmist says in 115, they idolize what they own and what they make with their hands. But the things can't talk to them or answer their prayers. The possessions will never satisfy. Their futile faith in dead idols and dead works can never bring life or meaning to their souls. Blind men can only create blind things. Those deaf to God can only make a deaf image. Dead men can only create dead idols. And everyone who trusts in these powerless dead things will be just like what they worship, powerless and dead. Religion is not of God. It desires for you to give as little to God as possible. You can attend church for a few hours a week. Maybe say grace or words of thanksgiving before you eat. And maybe a prayer before bedtime. But the word of God says, pray without ceasing. Bless the Lord at all times. Praise him continually. Now, how can we do that? Simple, in relationship. Not just a physical one, but a spiritual one first. King Jesus Christ says, seek first the kingdom of God, not a church or a religion. He didn't even say, seek first Christianity. I know I will get in trouble for that one, but I don't care. I'm speaking the word of God. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. That's relationship with King Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God. Then we can pray without ceasing, bless God at all times, and have the praise continually be in our mouth. So as it relates to the idols in my life like golf, our family, God put an abrupt end to that. He didn't mind me playing golf, it's just that it couldn't be before Him. God whispers to us, and if He doesn't get our attention, then He shouts. I play golf now for fun, and it is not before my God and King, not even close. So the unknown God that the people in Athens worshipped, they were smart enough to know there's some things we just can't explain. So those things must come from the unknown God. So Paul says to them, the God who made the world and everything in it, he is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. Family Elohim says, therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think the divine being is like gold or silver or stone an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. That man is our Lord, the Son of Man, King Jesus Christ. Stop looking for God in buildings. He might show up there, but he does not live there. He is the God and King and ruler and creator of all heaven and earth. He wants to live in human temples he created in relationship, not live in man-made temples we built in religion. Family, make the unknown God of religion the known God of relationship. Much love.